XL Prime Week. Okay, everybody, welcome back. We have the second match up here. This is, of course, round robin. So, uh, if Puck win, uh, no, if oh, we've got Plumerant here. So, if Plumerant wins this one, uh, he will actually secure his place in the round of 16 advance in first place out of Group A. But uh, down here in the bottom left, it's a yellow Frutus player, Dipwood. And his opponent, top right hand corner. Purple Zerg player, Woomerant. Just two games technically away from moving on to the round of 16. Yeah. And, I mean, the previous PVZ we saw on this was that ling was that really, really heavy ling push. So maybe we'll see that again. Definitely a possibility. Yeah, uh, we could see it. Of course, Dipwood... There's a strong potential he was watching that and might be on guard for it. Already, actually, he's going to open up very differently in the puck. Two gates to start things up before his cyber core or anything comes down, before his Nexus. And, uh, yeah, all of this coming down for Nexus is going to mean some fairly heavy aggression coming out of Dipwood. I'm thinking Adepts. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll have to see. He is going to get a Nexus behind this, though. So, as quickly as he can, while still being able to... Um, yeah, get a decent little swish of harassment onto Plummer. Mm -hmm. What's really fascinating so far for me as a Protoss player and just watching any Protoss players is he only got one gas. Um, just uh, Dipwood did. And I'm mm. really curious because generally when you have wanted to be aggressive, at least in Heart of the Swarm, you go for two, ha you go for two gas, whether or not it's two in each or three in each really depends on what your kind of bank or what you're going into, whether it be Stargate, whatever. But there's a second gas going down now. This really intrigues me because we're always used to in Heart of the Swarm, okay, just two gas right off the bat at 15, whatever, in Heart of the Swarm. But now in Legacy of yeah. the Void, we're seeing a little bit more timed out strategies because you can't push out an extra gate if if you need to defend early on whatever you push out a lot of zealots instead of relying off the sentries whatever but it's still kind of fascinating to me how that's being played out and this probe doesn't actually see the lings for now it will though because it's on that amazing that, that's actually really clever yeah. yeah that's cool and uh yeah but i mean i think with the uh addition of those of the adepts only being uh 25 gas of course you, you can go, afford to go slightly lighter on the gas earlier on, but two of them walking into space are going to provide a strong harassment force, focusing firing down a few drones, and then they're going to start fighting the queens while the shade moves up into the main base. And uh, yeah, they can teleport straight from middle line once again. Keep on fighting them drones. Three drones, four drones already gone down. They're going to back themselves into corner here, but uh, they've avoided fighting the links for the most part. And six, seven, maybe even an uh, eighth drone could be taken out by this final adept. Uh, would be, yeah, I mean, this is, I'd say this is a pretty successful little push out of these couple yeah. adepts. And what was that, just two adepts right there? So 200 yeah. minerals, 50 gas for seven kills early on. That I'd say that was very much worth it. Not only that, but he saw the layer, actually, I assume he saw the layer. Yeah, he saw the layer, and did he, what else? Yeah, I mean, he saw the layer, but really he forced out a decent amount of lings from that, even though Plumerant's already doing it. But still, I'd say it's totally worth it. Now, Plumerant... He's got to get damage done, but already, as you were mentioning, Trigonal, Dipwood may have seen the previous games. He knows either way that these Lings are working on the back rocks, and he's got to... I don't know, really, if this is going to do that much damage. It's just going to be a big commitment from Plumerant into nothing. Yeah, I mean, you could be right. Plumerant's... He's not going to run up yet. He, yeah, I think he wants to wait for speed at least before he actually commits in here. He knows that Dipwood knows that Plumerant's... Uh has been knocking down those back rocks. Saw the uh, saw the probe there. But Hydra's on the way as well. Uh, is this is this another kind of... Is this the same as the ability used on Puck in game one? I think it's a little different, but um, maybe the same sort I, of thought behind in, it, a Link Hydra push. In game one, we didn't see quite as many Lings. I think we only saw like mm -hmm. five or six Lings just to scout, take some map control. So that may put the Hydra Den slightly back in the drone's little back. And then, plus, there was seven workers killed. So, for now, I think the Hydra is going to be a little bit delayed. But Plumerant, he had the possibility of doing damage here and there. Metabolic boost just kicked in. And there's not a pylon in range to defend. 
No, not this natural middle line, but uh, there's another pile and overcharge going to go down and picks off a lane. But yeah, four probes for a lane. Uh, two lanes, I guess. I'd say that's a pretty even trade. Yeah, yeah, that that is pretty even. You're correct. And oh, this warp prism actually has four adepts in it. That that was a hundred gas, four hundred minerals right there, plus the two hundred on top of the warp prism being taken out. Uh, that was the aggression of Dipwood right there, gone. Yeah, well, Clurman had a lot more success. Uh, I mean, four lings, uh, sorry, four pros for two lings is pretty good. And uh, these four sentries being watched in as well, gonna try and. Uh, and stem the tide but of course Plumerant has so many attack angles he can go in through the back uh, or he can go try and uh, do a bit of harass on the front and these hydras are just going to tear down this wall uh, natural at the back Dipwood's mothership core is nowhere near in range to uh, folk no charge yeah. at the back so a couple of the pawns are going to go down before they can even have that uh, defensive spell cast on them and yeah actually all of them are going to go down before a single shot is fired but the force field is pretty good so Plumerant is going to have to back off doesn't quite get a sentry. And I'd just like to go back for a second that that warp prism was killed with four adepts. That I'd like to just stress how important that was because that was all the aggression from Dipwood. There's another warp prism on the way, but that original attack would have hit at like the five minute mark, pulling these hydras back, not allowing those back doors to be destroyed. And now the entire army of Dipwood is out of position, including the mothership core. This is just, I oh mean, my God. Th that going down was so big. Yeah, huge. Uh, oh, he doesn't even get the he doesn't even get the force field. Three sentries got walked in to try and stop that, but even with a two second warp time, it was not enough. And he's gonna lose his natural base. Yeah, we'll be focused down and realistically you're like, hey, there's some workers at the back. But that's only eight workers actually mining at that natural base that got out of there. For now though, Dipwood bringing along the workers, Dipwood is going for it. He's been pulled apart by the fantastic aggression from Plumerant. And we'll see how it works out. The probes are still with the main army of Dipwood. And I mean, he's going to try to do as much damage as he can here. He needs to do as much damage as he can. So far, pretty even on workers killed. But his opponent, which is Plumerant, is up by 21 workers and is on three hatch already. Well, really, Dipwood is on one? Yeah. Uh, so Dipwood doesn't have much behind him. strange question. But yeah, yeah, I mean... He does have uh, he does have the power of adept, and he can get on top of these hydras. He'll certainly do really well. Well, I think pulling the throat drones is exactly the right move here for Uh Maybe even he should have done it a little earlier, but I think he can't keep fighting into these force fields. Just back off. Use those force fields to, for your own defense. Plumerant, sorry, Dipwood can't keep on pushing here. I think as soon as those force fields have gone back, gone down, Plumerant could have been right. I'll pull back. Dipwood can't keep pushing on here. It buy, they buy, bought me time. Those force fields are going to work for me now. And uh, he can do the same sort of thing. Make him push into his own chokes. Yeah, definitely. That's a fantastic point, Trinal. To see, though, still, I mean, Dipwood, he's still trying to be very aggressive. He's taking his natural base now. But realistically, Plumerant was just waiting to get up to this Roach number. And even though there's centuries of Depths and Immortals here, I feel like Boomer off three base economy and three base production is Zerg. He's got a really nice move. Or he's got a really nice position here. One thing just to comment on: we just saw the Roaches surge forward to try to snipe the Immortal, but now as Protoss, because it's instantly, it, it instantly goes off on the Immortal. It, its ability, it's really hard to actually snipe them. Yeah, it can be really difficult, especially with the uh, Warp Prism waiting in the wings to kind of blink pick up those units way and uh, these immortals doing so much work here kill almost all of the roaches from plumerant and he's starting to run out of steam having to use links there he doesn't have the gas the drones come off the line again another time warp is going to go down and stop these units retreating quite as effectively but it looks like plumerant just has enough to push dipwood back oh clutch saving that warp uh, even sorry, though that. yeah no it was a quite a clutch save right there Plumerant was kind of losing steam there. Still, he has double the income of his opponent, Dipwood. And right there, I mean, Dipwood is only on one base economy, now moving out to two. But his main is practically mined out. Only four mineral patches out of the eight, out of the eight starting. Is that correct? Eight? I believe it's eight. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean... Dipwood, he has to do damage, and yes, he did damage, he killed, he killed maybe 10 workers in that attack overall with them being pulled, but I still feel like Plumerant, situation, as long as I, as long as I get my economy up stable to three base, and I don't like move command, I feel like Plumerant's got this, especially because he's got creep at Dipwood's third base. 
Yeah, it's going to make it a little tougher for Dick to actually take that. Perumundo put a lot into the defense there. And, of course, his own main mine base is getting towards mine out as well. Uh, main base even. And uh, Dipwood did manage to reestablish his natural nexus behind that. So he's not... I mean, he's not completely out of this, but he's going to be coming forward with another push here. Plumerant has a Lurker Dent on the way. If he can get that, he'll have the supreme defensive unit for Zerg. And uh, I don't see how Dipwood pushes into it. But for now, Plumerant... Uh, pushing into those force fields again, the drones pulling off the line aren't going to be able to do too much. A nice force field on that, uh, on the ramp up into the main. It cuts two hatcheries of production off, but a reinforcement warp in of Adepts and Dipwood is going to force Plumerant to be pushed back once again. Yep. Dipwood's got to be really careful though. He's been relying off those sentries, but only 200 gas a minute. He does not have the, he doesn't actually, he can't actually afford to warp in a lot more sentries at this point because of the rest of his army composition, especially the Adepts. Even though they're cheap on gas, in Heart of the Swarm it would be Zealots and, and maybe a few Stalkers being morphed in if he had Blink, something of the sort, but it's still, it's very much cutting into his gas and he cannot keep relying off those sentries. And now the Lurkers are here. They're going to be able to just shred through this force. And I'm just curious, does a Lurker, does the Lurker attack destroy force fields? No. <laughs> I have no idea. No, 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 no I, I have uh, no idea. It was kind of random. Ah, uh, Ditwood, he's attacking just a little too late. Plumrant morphed up five Lurkers here, and uh, he managed to get away with it. They do take quite a while to warp in, but uh, having having gotten away with all five of those Hydras being out of his army at the same time, uh, one, the Lurkers don't get focused down, and he gets a great forward position on them. Uh, Going to micro back that injured one as well, so it's difficult to imagine how Ditwood pushes into this. Yeah. And oh, you were God. saying they're not focused down, but the only way they focus them down allows the entire rest of that Roach Hydra force to just wreak havoc on the main force of Dipwood. This is so tough. Just whether you can have so many analogies for this, but just you can't move into those lurkers once they go down. It's oh. whatever the siege tank, whatever area defense it is, you just can't quite do that. Now Plumeran is moving out with literally it's 103 army supply to 31. Well, looking it's like he wants to take his third, but... Here, though. Uh, he's gonna, he does see those Disruptor Rocks, so he's paying attention. He can move back and trap the entire army of Dipwood. There's no motor call, they can't recall. But no, he's just going to keep on pressing forwards. Uh, is there a motor call on the map at all? Uh, no, Dipwood has, doesn't have anything. He can't force field this. Plumerance, actually, he's going to... He's just going to try and deny this third base, but oh, Dipwood's army's actually come back home. He decided not to go for the base trade. That warp prison was across the map trying to keep the defense up, but I guess Plurimant feels comfortable containing Dipwood to two bases, and I think he should, because that natural base is going to start losing mineral patches very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will, but looks like for now, Dipwood, this is, this is the time of the game where you're just relying off your harass to stay alive. He needs to get damage done to delay whatever he can. One thing to point out for Plumerant, and actually for Dipwood also, is Dipwood does not have a forge, Plumerant does Lucian Chamber. Even though they have fantastic armies at the 13 minute mark, neither of them actually have kind of the critical, okay. I go in with 1-1, one, one, you go in with 1-1, one, one, or I go in with 2-1 and I win because I have a little bit better upgrades. Like, there's pretty much nothing for Dipwood to bank off to win here, but again, for Plumerant, he doesn't have fantastic upgrades, so, seize. Well, I mean, yeah, neither of them have upgrades, though, so it's kind of evens out. Uh, I guess, I don't know, the Immortals scale really well with upgrades because they get more than plus one per upgrade. Uh, I actually don't know how much Lurkers get per upgrade. Roaches get plus two per upgrade, so I guess I guess Plumerant's a little worse off because the Roaches want that extra, like, plus whatever per upgrade, but uh, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Improvement, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think... I'm just pointing it out. It's the 14 minute yeah. mark, and neither player has actually been able to make any upgrades. Like, especially if we look at Plumerant's bank, he's got 900 mineral or 900 gas. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of roaches get caught out here. It's pretty nice. Only one of them ends up going down, but uh, Plumerant is going to go around here. He's got such a scary army, but he's not really doing anything with it. Um, he's going to run up here and be able to. Oh, he's actually going to get this probe before it manages to place down Nexus. What? What? dead and seeing no next up here he's just gonna take down this pylon kind of mm -hmm. burrows his lurkers and just dares dipwood to come at him 
Yeah, and Dipwood's just kind of saying, you know what, I'm going to be super on the defensive. Finally a third base, but Carrier is coming out for Dipwood, and actually the Carrier car Interceptor upgrade, which we don't often see, but yeah, definitely is a good move to do. Carriers are coming out, but now for Dipwood, even though you were saying, yes, he got one Roach earlier on with those force fields, that was four force fields. There's only two sentries in that army. And Dipwood has been 100% relying off his force fields to actually be able to push back Plumerant, or at least take his engagement. So, right here, it's... Uh, I'd love to say Dipwood can kind of take these attacks, but it's still, if we just look at the army supply, 160 to 60. 160 to 60. It's, it's just... Plumerant's just was waiting, so he knows without a shadow of doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt, he's gonna win. If he waits too long, though, he'll be facing the Golden Armada. Dipwood can actually... Uh, bank it up, but it really needs that third base now. Uh, one of these mineral patches down to 40, and uh, yeah, yeah, I guess he decided it's his time to strike. Smashes down this wall at the front. Lurkers are going to borrow up. Dipwood has to actually move down this ramp, and uh, oh, too many of the Lurkers are too far up to the top, though, so only one of them's actually firing this engagement. The Adepts are going to go forward, but they're going to go into Lurker fire. That's not going to end well for them. Plumerant gets right on top of the army. Only three of the Adepts end up teleporting. They focus down on Lurker, sure, but... Do they even do that? Okay, no, uh... Yeah, I think this is gonna be the end here of game one for Ditwood. Harlan Overcharger's going down everywhere, but his only mining base falls. GG. GG. It's game one, one game away from advancing. Yep. In Currently down a game in this best of three. If he loses this, or actually either way, this player in the top right has to play Puck, but top right hand corner, the yellow Protoss player from Rival Gaming, it is Dipwood. And then down the bottom left, one game away from advancing, it's a couple of plumerant. Going for that. Actually, I thought it was a pool first. Never mind, it's not a pool first. That would have been a little... That would have been pretty pretty gutsy for him to do the pool yep. first, especially with the depths, but won't be the case. Now, obviously, game one of the first match we saw was on Orbital Shipyard. No adept push from the Protoss player, but like we've commented on, and like Trigonal has, the adept photon overcharge rushes, the adept pylon rushes, whatever you want to call them, are so, so hard to deal with as Zerg. Yeah, they can be a little tough. Uh, breaking down that ramp to try and actually secure your third base, but I don't know if that's Dipwood, what Dipwood wants to do. I think he's going to open up with his two-gate adept pressure uh, once again here, but that doesn't preclude him doing a little bit of a photon overcharge contain at the bottom of that ramp, so yeah, I guess we'll see. Plurimant, though, going for fast roaches once again. Yeah, will be fast roaches once again, and on Orbital Shipyard, since you do have that pocket base, a little bit easier to defend any big pushes as Protoss. You got your Sentry, you got your Adept, you, you got pretty much all the health you want in the world right there. But again, roaches can turn into Ravagers, which do nullify force fields uh, if that is what this is going to come to. For now, though, Plumerant just droning up, getting his queens out, getting his production going, only is on one gas, so it is a pretty... There's a third base actually coming down for Plume Ramp, but on one gas, it still is pretty choked. There's a second gas coming down, and I assume this is going to be Roach Ravager, or at least just Roach Defense. If you're if you're doing this as Zerg, I feel like you almost have to actually put pressure on, and not just say, I'll just push out their Roaches for fun, or just for defense. Um, I don't know. I think uh, Plurant get all over with a fairly economic opening. And we look at the work count. Plurant's actually even with Dipwood, which is a pretty decent achievement considering Chrono. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see. I mean, he's going to have a few roaches to greet these adepts. So, yeah, I think overall this has been a pretty decent success here for Plurant. But it's still going to be tough. These adepts are going to take a long time to die. There's plenty of workers they can focus down before they uh, are going to be taken out. Mm -hmm. And there's one more roach on the way, but with only realistically, what, like three roaches? Oh, I was going to say they could keep shading back and forth, but they were brought to too low health, and uh, Plumerant will nicely defend. But with those early adepts, even though they didn't get damage done, other than we see three drones, they did spot the roaches. 
which it's going to be pretty quick just to float on two gates. The the Robo facility is out and running, and I think Dipwood's going to be fine. And honestly, there's no aggression off the back of this just layer. And actually, the roaches just pull back. Yeah, he does not want to sacrifice those roaches this early on to uh, to the Protoss player. Oh, the Plumerant, I mean, looking like he's just going to go up to the three base economy and push off from there. Yeah, all looks pretty good for our Zerg player. Um, three drones down for two adepts is pretty much as well as you can defend that, I think. Uh, like, maybe you could lose one fewer on a different map, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, all well, goes all goes very well for him. What are you, what are you eyeing at? I, I, think, I think this would be actually one of the best maps to defend adepts, only because since they have to go from the third to the... To the uh, to the main to the natural since it is kind of each base is successively behind each other the adepts no matter what the only way they get out is through going through the main base's ramp so in, you know how you have to deal with the shades going back and forth well mm -hmm. if they want to go from the natural or the main to the third there's only one way to do that and if they want to go from the natural to the third even though it's kind of that even though it seems simple there's only it's a ramp each time so you can kind of lock them out of other bases I guess so. I kind of, kind of see what you mean, I think, but, uh, I mean, the shades do I explained go it pretty units. poorly, but either way, I feel like this is probably one of the better maps to defend Adepts. Not the Adept Pylon, but still to defend Adepts. I guess so. This is uh, going to be a little push out here from Dipwood as well. Uh, a few Adepts, a Warp Prism as well to help with that reinforcement rate. Uh, Plurament has plenty of roaches, five roaches on the way, and there's Tunnel Claws and Burrow, actually. He's got a double roach warrant. Ooh, spooky. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he's in a pretty good position to defend this. The two immortals are going to pose a slight problem, but once Burrow, uh, actually, he, hang on, he needs to get Burrow. Oh, yeah, we'll have to see how that works out. Roach speed is only about 10 seconds away, but I don't know if it's enough. Two Immortals are pretty darn good with the Adepts and the Sentries. Two Time Warps go down, but there is still the Recall Home. It's only 50 energy, currently 100 energy on that Mothership Core, and there's only one Queen to actually detest that Mothership Core. Or attest it, not detest, but contest it, I yeah. I think Dip Wood just pushes through, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think he does. Yeah, uh, Adepts, good. pretty good. The Immortals haven't even been touched, it looks like. And, uh, yeah, Time Warp is gonna pop, but a little bit too late actually affect Plurant's units, but he's going to go in, he's going to try and take down these adepts. The drones are coming up from the middle line, but they're going to be slaughtered in quick time by these adepts. And uh, the Immortals don't really do anything. Another big warping of adepts here. Looks like Dipwood is going to push forwards for his first win. Tunneling Claws is finished, but Burrow's not done. And let's be honest, with three roaches left, four even, it, it doesn't really matter how well upgraded they are against two Immortals. GG! GG! Dipwood manages to even it up one to one. All right, guys, we're here on Bridgehead. It's the third and final map for these two players in their match here. And uh, down here in the bottom right, the yellow Protoss player from Ritzies, Dipwood. Which I always find a funny clan, because there was an actual Z's clan for a while, and then their reboot was called Rip Z's. Over here, left-hand side of Bridgehead, the purple Zerg player one game away from moving, moving on to the round of 16. It is Plumerant. A Plumerant. We'll have, we'll have to see how he wants it. Too many, too many different vowels and too many vowels overall in that name. Sometimes you're just like, I just want the one-syllable name. Good old, good old Z's, whatever. For now, though, Bridgehead, I'm still kind of unsure in Legacy of the Void, because in ASL, at least, when Trigon and I have been casting, I mean, we, we've seen proxy hatches, we've seen roach pushes, we've seen spires. There's just so many different things you can do on this map that seem to work out. It's not like, okay, this is the meta on this map, because it is a unique map. It's more just whatever works seems to work fine. Yeah, I mean, both races have a couple of, uh, kind of cheesy, aggressive options on Bridgehead. Uh, mostly games still seem to just play out in a regular way because that's how most games play out. Is this? Well, it does have a little bit unique map architecture, which is in Heart yeah. of the Swarm, we'd see yeah. a little bit more unique plays, but in Legacy of the Void, it's kind of like, well, not really so much because of the just the big economy burst and then 
uh, early game. Oh, yes, I mean, you can still, it, it still uh, produces some interesting kind of attack car things and uh, defensive architecture. I mean, there's it, it's called Bridgehead, and there's a ton of bridges, uh, which are, of course, chokes kind of across the map. So you can definitely uh, kind of force all those off, take great engagements with Protoss, or set up a couple of lurkers and try and split the map as Zerg. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty interesting map. Lurkers are good on this map. What I've figured out is playing Zerg. Lurkers always good, but lurkers, lurkers good on this map. Now. Yeah, yeah. Lurkers are always good, but you can do some kind of, kind of unique stuff. Overlord of Plume Rant just kind of identifies everything as cool. And actually, this Overlord, the second one, I think the second, yeah, the second one coming out, will spot these adepts, which is always nice. Even though you can kind of presume there's going to be some adept aggression, unless your opponent is doing something really wacky, you still have a nice little hint. And oh, he may be able to. Oh. They would have they would have one shotted that drone right there if uh, he could have canceled that third. Won't be the case though. Main three roaches are started and I think that's fine from Plumerant. We saw on orbital shipyard him defend it pretty well. Oh, he loses four this time. Won't quite kill him. Yeah, not so much. Um, and yeah, actually the adults do both manage to get away. So that's a nice little win for Deadwood. A uh, little bit tougher to kind of bounce between the main and natural on this map as they're slightly further away. And of course, you have to go kind of through the main to get to that, so you can't kind of run in be an immediate threat. But Grumman's actually going to chase these out all the way across the map with his roaches. Uh, yeah, I wonder if Ditwood's going to have too much time to defend this. There's the possibility that Plumerant can morph up a couple of Ravagers and try and apply some real pressure, but we'll see. Yeah. Off the back of this, just drones from Plumerant. So if they do, if these roaches do damage, there won't be reinforcements for a long time. And yeah, there's the photon overcharge. Three pylons, beautifully placed by Dipwood, will be a defense and a mortal coming out. So it would have been fine. Even though Plumerant has roaches, I feel like oh, actually there's burrows. So maybe he will commit to roaches. I was gonna say maybe he won't truly commit into roaches. Just get, um, just use that to buy time and get into the mid game or defend. Those early adepts, which lings just seem to suck at, and you have to make way too many lings. So I like the roach opening to defend the adepts, and I think he's going to commit to that because this time burrow is being made, and hopefully there will be a second roach warn again. Which, if you think about it, it's really not too big. Sometimes it's like, oh, well, he made a second spire. That's a big commitment to get faster one one. But with roaches, with roach warn, it's only 125 minerals, so not really that huge. Yeah. 150. Yeah. It's not enormous. Of course, you do have to sacrifice a drone as well, but uh, it's cool. Um, the only thing is, like, you have to, to to make it worth it. You have to do it quite early, uh, and earlier on, that 150 minerals and one drone is actually a relatively large investment. If you're doing it later on, you might as well just get the roach one slightly earlier and start your upgrades. Um, both in the same roach run a little bit earlier, and you'll get them within like 30 seconds of double roach run timing. So, I don't know, it's a little interesting, but kind of the thing, couple of things that Burrows enables is just borrowing lings and watchtowers, and especially on the attack pass on this map. But so far, Ditwiz actually is going for the same sort of push that won him the game last game, and uh, Plurant has, oh, this time he's actually going to set up a borrow roach trap. This is exactly what he needs, I think, to get straight on top of these immortals, focus them down really fast, and Ditwiz going to have to be. He's going to have to recognize this so, so quickly if he wants to actually, uh, wants to actually yeah. take it this time. The, the Roaches do 16 damage per shot, and those Immortals do soak up 200 damage over that three-second period, so we'll have to see if the situation will get a fantastic pull. And right now, this Dipwood for him, yeah, I was say, right now Dipwood's like, wow, you have nothing, but that is not the case, guys. We saw this in game one from Dipwood, but... Oh, oh we killed him. Yeah, I was going to say, we saw it in game one, but that was after his natural was taken out. So game two was the true, okay, this is how good I am at this push. But with the Burrow Roach, with, with really Plumerant, I think, playing to his opponent and understanding you like these pushes, well, may, some players would say go quick Hydras. Some would say maybe get the, the, the um, what is it? Not Hydras. Oh, yeah, it was some players would say Hydras, but for Plumerant, yeah, Lurkers. But for Plumerant, it was just, I'm just going to go Mass Roach and you can't quite deal with it, especially with Tunneling Claws. Or not, especially with Burrow, no Tunneling Claws yet. Yeah, I think uh, Lurk is just a little too slow. It does take a long time to walk, 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 walk up the Lurker down. And we see Plumerant, he actually skipped Lair to make that defense. But right now, he's breaking down these back rocks, trying to apply a little bit of pressure in towards Dipwood. He actually has to be careful not to get force fielded in here, because he's going to have to commit once he gets force fielded in. And then he risks more and more force fields 
Uh, but he can walk out of those ones at least. But I know this is a lot of roaches me thrown away. Grimmon doesn't actually have the uh, uh, tunneling claws just yet, so that was pretty expensive. And now Dibwood has a very strong army compared to Florent. Florent's still just sticking on just roaches. And with the later layer, maybe it would have been worth it to go double roach run for the tunneling claws in this game. Yeah, definitely. It may have been. Only now does actually roach speed start. Tunneling Claws is not even being started yet, so we'll have to see how that pans out for him. The only reason he was able to take that first engagement was just, as you mentioned, the Burrow Trap. But Dipwood's not going to follow that again. He has an Observer that's actually pretty far behind the Mothership Core. He could potentially do it again, but he knows the Observer is out. And we'll see how the defends are. There's not quite as many. Actually, there's zero force fields at the moment, so this is all going to come down to the micro. But man, we've seen Adepts time after time. They're so tanky that... They, they can bust through a lot. Drones are going to have to be pulled, I think, to make this defense. Uh, it's possible. A couple of force fields walk from, walked in sentries to do, do a good job. And this time the Immortals are staying protected. They're really smashing out that damage. Each of them uh, making their way up into the double digits kills. Plurimrant, he's trying to get on top of this. Moving forwards here, going to start doing some damage to the Immortals. But uh, they've got their Hardened Shields ability. Looks like Plurimrant does have enough roaches to push through. Uh, now that Hardened Shields uh, fails to activate or uh, falls off, Dipwood has to retreat again. And he still doesn't actually have a third base. It's on its way, but plurimrant has been on three base for a decent while. He's starting to get his Lurkaden up. Sorry, his uh, Hydroden up, uh, which he can morph up into Lurkaden. And... He kind of needs to think about taking a fourth soon, though, because then otherwise his main's going to mine out. Yeah, he does. Not only that, but just as the game goes on and Dipwood gets more production, you got to keep up in the production. We actually don't see any macro hatch. In earlier Legacy of the Void, we saw a lot of macro hatches on three bases, but now Zerg players kind of can deal with it a little bit better. And with those auto injects, we'll have to see. But this base actually it will be assaulted from behind. The roaches are here, and the force fields are actually used in that mineral line, and these roaches are going ham, going dry going directly for the Immortals, but sadly the Immortals already had the time, the the, uh, the Hardened Shield's still there. Yeah, they're all going to be saved by these uh, by this War Prism, but one of them, no space for the Immortal, and the army gets all cleaned up apart from this single War Prism. Uh, a couple of Immortals. One of them is actually going to, no, not quite go down. Uh, top Micro here by Dipwood. But these are two very damaged Immortals. They're going to be very sad limping back home. And Plurman, he's got a counterattack, a couple of split off. Should be able to deal with this little gateway force and threaten the third base as the rest of Plumerant's army comes back to join them. Yeah, Plumerant will be will be pushing again, and this base only has one pylon to actually put an overcharge. But this core is dead though, so that doesn't even matter. Roaches are going for the kill here. More roaches, more hydras are being pumped out. Four roaches, five hydras are being pumped out at the moment, and there's a steady stream across the map. Plumerant is going for the kill, and he's actually getting a decent amount of probes here. Nine probes go down. There's the mothership core, but there's no pylon here. There's only one pylon actually even defending this choke point. It really comes down to the sentries to do that, but the third base is denied. Plumerant take a fourth base off the back of this, I think he'll be in a fantastic position. For now, he's trying to kill what he can, and just to point out again, Glimmerant actually does not have an Evo Chamber, and we do see plus one just finishing. Because the players just have really not got upgrades, at least traditional part of the swarm, I guess, is what you'd call them upgrades. Yeah, just the plus one plus one upgrade, they're just getting those kind of individual unit upgrades, but uh, for now, I think Glimmerant's just going to try and kill Dipwood off three bases, a sign he doesn't need a fourth. Uh, a couple of Borrow Roaches are going to make their way around into the main base. Uh, I actually know they're not because this is a full wall. But they're going to break through this ramp pretty easily and then, you know what? Borrow. And... Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, these are going to be some dead sentries. Yeah, these will be dead sentries, and that's a lot of gas for Dipwood here, especially only on two base. He still does have four assimilator income from that, but looks like, I mean, this is just great for Plumerant. Pulls the army back really get in Dipwood's head. This is a scary situation to deal with when you're just trying to follow the roaches, but your army has to follow them. So they're always in the lead, always deciding where they're going to be going next. They will pick off three sentries, two workers, but overall this has just allowed a long time for Plumerant to get up a nice force. Still though, Plumerant is not actually on a lurker den, just going for Hydra upgrades. Yeah, I like him to go for that big roach hydra force. Of course, he's got a ton of hyglyphs in here now, so he's got a great army against this gateway immortal force from Ditwood. There's absolutely no splash here, nothing above just basic robotech even. Uh, he does have a forge, but only plus one finished from it. Um, overlord speed, maybe some drops, but oh my god, Ditwood's army out in the middle of the map as Plumerant moves in. Plumerant's gonna head back though. 
he's 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 almost a little too cautious sometimes. I think he did this on Moonlight Madness as well. And though he did eventually win the game, he just kind of containing his opponent, which can end up being a very dangerous thing to do, at least in uh, Path of Swarm. But uh, he's going to find his <laughs> army. Yeah, it can. And that sadly, those were two gas probes actually back at home. Dipwood is down on a couple of his gases here. I don't know how the probes were along for the fight, but we'll see. Overlord Speed is on the way, and no drops, nothing like that um, with it, but still that'll help him pursue okay. Dipwood here. Maybe thinks those DTs, Overseers are there, and Boomerant going for the kill. Uh, I think this is it, guys. GG. Boomerant moves on to the round of 16. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to support the ASL by hitting the button now.